This has been needing to happen for a long time. What's up guys, my name is Blake Moore. Welcome to More Driven. On this channel, I go over all things gig work. Because I've been doing gig work for almost six years now, I try and just give you guys as much information as I've learned from my experiences on the road so that hopefully you can make as much money as you possibly can. So this whole week I'm uploading every day doing a seven part series on just basically the behind the scenes stuff about DoorDash that I've learned over my almost six years of doing this. And that stemmed from the fact that today, Valentine's Day, there is a DoorDash strike going on. And so Monday's video was my thoughts on the DoorDash strike. Yesterday's video, I explained why DoorDash doesn't want us to make money. If you wanna check out that video, I'll link it up at the top for you. You can go and watch it and then come back and watch this video. But now today is really where the juicy stuff comes into play. We really got to talk about this and I personally haven't seen any videos that go over what I'm going to discuss today, but there might be some out there. Obviously, I haven't watched every DoorDash video on this specific topic, but this needs to be talked about more. I mean, it is absolutely crazy what DoorDash is doing to its drivers. Now, my stance on the strike, you guys already know, I don't think a strike's going to matter. And also, I think if you don't like how DoorDash operates, then just don't work for them. That's unfortunately the reality when it comes to working for any of these platforms. But I think it's pretty messed up that DoorDash doesn't tell its dashers what I'm about to discuss with you guys up front. Before you go out on your first dash, when you're signing the independent contractor agreement, I feel like there should be a notice or something that says the amount of money that you see that you're making is a lot more than what you're actually taking home. So there's a couple things we're gonna be discussing in this video. I'm going to be giving you guys the most in-depth breakdown of how much you're actually profiting as a DoorDash driver. The most in-depth breakdown I've ever done in any of my videos. And then I'm going to be talking about other ways DoorDash is just completely, I'll just say it, scamming. They're just downright scamming their drivers. And after I went through and actually did all the math and everything that it took to make this video, it was kind of disturbing, like the, the trickery that has gone on for all these years, because even some of these things I didn't know. So first things first, let's discuss this pay breakdown. If you watched one of my recent videos, I explained how much DoorDashers really make in the year 2024. And that goes into a lot of the expenses that I'm going to be discussing in this video. So because I just kind of made a video on these expenses, I'll just go through a brief run through of what these expenses are and kind of the gist of that video. So basically, I discussed how if you were to DoorDash full-time for a year, 40 hours a week, every single week, and average $20 an hour, which I think is about the average over America, then you'd make $41,600. And let's just say you average a dollar per mile, and you so you had to drive 41,600 miles to make that amount of money. Now, you might think that's good on the surface, but... These are the expenses that I went over in that video. You would spend $3,640 on gas. You would end up spending about $1,000 on tires, $500 on brake pads, $500 on oil changes, $1,000 on miscellaneous stuff like if your AC goes out or a coolant pump breaks or you blow a tire, and then about $4,118 on taxes. And so that means your expense total would be $10,758. So your total profit, according to just those expenses, which are the most common expenses, you'd actually be pocketing $30,842 out of that $41,000. And that means that you're really only making $14.83 per hour. But like I mentioned in that video, I would be doing an even further breakdown, which is what I'm here to discuss with you guys today. So that is just kind of the surface level of what expenses come along with being a DoorDash driver. That is the actual physical expenses that you have to pay for upfront. But what a lot of people don't understand, and I know a lot of people actually do understand this as well because I see it in my comments, but what a lot of especially new dashers do not understand is that is not even half of the overall expenses. So get this, the biggest expense 
is actually car depreciation. Now I'm taking myself for example and the car that I use and how much I spent on my car. So let me just take you guys back a little bit. I used to drive a 2015 Mercedes C300, which was not the best car to do gig work in. I mean, it's expensive to fix and I mostly had that car because I was a real estate agent and I was using it for both. It got pretty good gas mileage on eco mode, like 30 miles per gallon, but you had to pay for premium gas and like I said, any, if anything went out on it, it was expensive to fix. Thankfully, nothing ever went out on it for me, but I ended up totaling that car. And honestly, that kind of bailed me out because I had already put like 100,000 miles, I think. It was like 100,000 or 80,000 miles on that car since I had gotten it. And that was in like two years. And that was because I was doing DoorDash full time. I mean, I was doing 100 hour work weeks, stuff like that. I was putting so many miles on that car but I got bailed out because I was fully insured on the car. And so I got all my money back that I still owed on the loan, plus a little bit more for the down payment on the car that I have now, which is a 2016 Chevy Cruze. It does pretty good for me. It's cheap to fix. It's really reliable. Haven't really had anything go out on it except one coolant pump. And then also the AC just recently went out, but that wasn't that big of a deal either. So it's been a really great car. It gets almost 40 miles per gallon freeway miles, and then like 25 city, I think. So combined, it's about 31 when I'm out on the road doing Uber or DoorDash. So it's pretty good. But that car cost me about $12,000, and I have a loan out on that car. And my interest rate, I believe, is 5%. And so every single month, I'm paying $250 to own that car. So yes, I'd be paying that monthly payment even if I wasn't doing gig work. But the depreciation on that car is going to rapidly decrease the value of my car because of how many miles I'm putting on it. I've already put, I believe, 35 or 40,000 miles on it in the year and four months that I've owned it, a little over a year that I've owned it. And the depreciation is what really kills you, especially if you have a loan out on your car, like a lot of people probably do. I mean, I just talked to this one guy. He's been doing Uber Black and Lyft Black for a little bit. He spends $1,200 a month on a black SUV so that he can have so that he can get access to the highest quality rides and that is a huge expense yes you get access to the best rides but that's a big payment and the depreciation on that car is probably absurd so I know this is a thing that a lot of people do out there they they have loans out on their car I mean it's hard to just buy a car up front with cash especially if you're doing Uber and Lyft because you can only have a car that is 10 years or newer in most states. And then I think in some of the bigger cities, it's five years or newer, like LA, New York, places like that. You have to have an even newer car. So it's hard to just pay cash for that. So my car was $12,000 and it probably only has roughly 90,000 miles left until it's just lost all of its value. I mean, it'll be at about 220,000 miles at that point. And so it won't have much value at all. Maybe it'll be worth like two, three grand or whatever, something like that, depending on how well I maintain it. But I'm just gonna say that for the sake of this video, after $90,000, my car will have zero value. At the pace that I'm going, I have four years left at the most, most likely two and a half, three years, depending on how many miles I'm driving, how often I'm doing gig work. I have slowed down a little bit the amount of gig work I'm doing, but I still do it a lot. So at the very most, four years. And that means that every single year, because I still owe $12,000 on that loan, every single year, the depreciation on that car is $3,000. Because if it's worth $12,000 right now, in four years, it won't be worth anything. So you just take the amount of years your car has left, driving the amount of miles that you average per year. And then you just divide the amount your car is worth by the amount of years it has left. And that's how you can figure out the depreciation on your car. So if my car is worth $12,000 right now, and it maybe has 90,000 miles left in it, which it honestly might not be worth 12,000 anymore, but whatever. You guys get what I'm saying. My car is worth $12,000. It has maybe three, four years left. And that means that every single year it is negative $3,000 I'm spending on that car. But that's not even the worst part of it because I still have about four years left on that loan. So say I hit that mark of like zero value in two and a half years. Well, I'm still having to pay money on the loan. So it's really a double whammy if you have a loan out on your car because you're paying interest and 
money towards your car while simultaneously your car is going down in value because you're driving it so much. So in reality, my car payment is $250 a month, but I'm also losing about $500 a month in the value of that car. So it's really like $750 that I'm losing every single month from this. So you take the depreciation of your car plus my car payment plus insurance and you add all of that plus all the expenses that I mentioned earlier and the total expenses that I really have every single year if I were to drive 41,600 miles is $18,558, which means from that original scenario, $41,600 made for the year averaging $20 an hour, really your take-home pay for the year is $23,042, which if you're working 40 hours every single week, that's only $11.08 per hour. But that's not even the worst of it. This is what a lot of people don't realize as well, is that the government basically is telling you exactly how much you're spending on expenses by the amount that you get for a tax write-off every single mile you drive. Because let's be honest, the IRS does not want to just give you write-offs for no reason. But in my opinion, they do have to be somewhat fair. And so the tax write-off for this year is 67 cents per mile. And so that's essentially what they're saying is that it costs you 67 cents in total for everything you spend to drive your car a mile. That's with the price of gas being still higher than it has been in years past. That's with the price of everything going up. I mean, car maintenance is going up. There, there's just a lot of inflation right now. So everything is going up. And the government is literally telling you, you're spending 67 cents per mile you drive. So that's why you get to write off 67 cents per mile you drive, which means you're really only pocketing 33 cents per mile you drive. So if the orders you're accepting are taking you a dollar per mile to complete, then you're really only making 33 cents per mile. And so get this, if you take the $20 an hour average that we started off with at the beginning of this video, and you take 33% of that, which is essentially what the government is telling you that you're making, you actually only profit $6.60 per hour, which means that if you were to do DoorDash full-time based off of this 40 hours every single week for a year, you would only make $13,728. That's your profit. And while this doesn't hit you immediately, if you do this full-time for three, four, five years, six years, some people have been doing it 10 years now, this catches up with you. You're going to have to replace your car. Like, that is the reality of it. You can only do this for a couple of years without having to buy a new car. That's just the reality of it. And so that is what I think is so extremely messed up and how I think DoorDash actually tricks so many people into falling into their trap of doing this full time because doing this full time is just so not worth it. If you're doing it here and there as a side hustle, maybe you work five, 10 hours a week on the weekend, whatever it may be, then that's perfectly fine because you're not gonna completely run your car into the ground by doing this for just a couple hours a week for a little bit of side income. But if you're doing this 40, 50, 60, some people do like 70 hours a week, then you are just obliterating your car. And the more hours you're putting in, the less and less money you're making. Because let's say you only do this for part-time for a year then you don't have to worry about all of this stuff that I just talked about. You just really have to worry about gas because there's not going to be a lot of oil changes. There's not going to be a lot of stuff going out on your car because you're just driving less miles. So the more you work for DoorDash, the less and less you make. So you're thinking, oh, I can make 1500 a week doing this 50, 60, 70 hours. But that's not the case because the more and more you work, the less and less that pay goes down. Because in the long run, it's all going to catch up with you. You're going to have to pay for a new car. And that is just the unfortunate reality. And it's never talked about. DoorDash never mentions this as far as I'm aware of. And it's just downright wrong that they advertise that dashers can make $25 an hour, $20 an hour, $18 an hour. I see these ads all the time. And it's just so, I mean, it honestly should be, there should be a lawsuit for false advertising, unless they say in like super small print somewhere that I'm unaware of that this pay is not the amount of pay that you actually get to keep, or this pay is just your gross revenue. This is not your profit or something like that, because otherwise there needs to be a lawsuit. And so I actually wanted to show you guys how much you would have to make per hour to profit $20 an hour. In order to do that, according to what the government is telling us that 
we're spending on cars. You would have to make $126,060 a year just to profit that 41,000. And that would mean every single hour you have to make $60 and 60 cents per hour to profit $20 an hour. Now I think the government slightly overestimates the amount that you have to spend. I've been doing this a while and I don't think it's actually 67 cents per mile. But if you don't even do what the government is saying that you're spending and you just take what I've talked about all of the expenses plus the car depreciation and all of that, then you would still have to be averaging $44.44 per hour to make that $20 an hour profit. So it's just one big scam, unfortunately. And the even bigger scam that they're running is the fact that they call us independent contractors. Now it's kind of messed up that DoorDash calls us independent contractors, yet we're really not independent contractors. Because let me read you what the actual definition of an independent contractor is. This is according to the IRS. It says the general rule is that an individual is an independent contractor if the payer has the right to control or direct only the result of the work and not what will be done and how it will be done. If you are an independent contractor, then you are self-employed. The earnings of a person who is working as an independent contractor are subject to self-employment tax. You are not an independent contractor if you perform services that can be controlled by an employer. What will be done and how it will be done. This applies even if you are given freedom of action. What matters is that the employer has the legal right to control the details of how the services are performed. If an employer-employee relationship exists, regardless of what the relationship is called, then you are not an independent contractor and your earnings are genuinely and your earnings are generally not subject to self-employment tax. So let's just dissect that for a second here because I know this video is getting kind of long. But they say we're independent contractors, yet we have no control over the pay. We yes we get to control what orders we're accepting, but we don't get to control what we're what we're willing to have the base pay be. If we were truly independent contractors, then there would not be an employee-employer relationship. They can deactivate us off of the platform whenever they want. That is an employer firing you. And also, they're the ones who set the price for the customer. That means they're the employer. They're the ones who dictate how much the customer is spending. If we were independent contractors, then we would be giving the customer a bid as to what we're willing to have our pay be in order to take that specific job, which in this case, the job is delivering your food. So if we were truly independent contractors, we would be able to set our base pay to whatever we want it to be. And let me just explain briefly on how this would work exactly. I'm going to be going into more details on this, one of my other videos this week, so just stay tuned. But I wanted to touch on it briefly because this is just another thing that DoorDash needs to be exposed about. It, there needs to be a lawsuit about it. They can't call us independent contractors if this is the case. And I haven't read the independent contractor agreement that they make you sign, so maybe there's some slick language in there, but it just seems super messed up to me because this is how it should work if we are independent contractors. When a customer goes to order, they will see certain dashers in the area by the restaurant that they are wanting to order from. They would put in their order and then that order would get sent to, let's say five dashers phones who are by the restaurant. And then you can put in the amount of money that you're willing to accept to do that job. So maybe a dasher who's sitting in the parking lot of that restaurant would just type in like, oh, the base pay will be $3. You don't live that far away and then tip however much you want or something like that. And maybe someone that's farther away will say, I'm not willing to do this for less than $8. Or maybe their car gets worse gas mileage. So they would put in like, oh, I'm only willing to do this for $7 plus whatever you're willing to tip me or whatever they want to put as their pay. And then the customer would see, okay, I don't want to pay that much, so I'm just going to pick the closest driver. And maybe they could see what our ratings were and how often we get the food there on time, maybe proof of a hot bag that we're using, things like that, where the customer could gauge, okay, maybe I don't want the person who's sitting in the parking lot because one, they don't have proof that they're using a hot bag, two, their customer rating is only 4.5, so maybe they're going to end up getting my food to me and it's going to be cold but this dasher is a little bit further away. They're saying that I have to pay them $5 and then whatever tip I want to add on top of that. But they have a five-star rating and they use a hot bag and this and that. They've been doing it for five years or something like that. 
just have more details about the dasher. And then the customer can decide, and that's that. That would be an independent contractor. And then there would be a little DoorDash fee that the customer would have to pay on top of the bid. And that little fee would go to DoorDash because they're allowing us to use their platform and the rest goes to us. That's how an independent contractor relationship should work. So I hope this brings some light on a lot of the sketchy stuff that DoorDash is doing behind the scenes that the majority of DoorDash drivers are just completely unaware of, and it's no fault of their own, especially if you're new. You, you haven't been doing this for six years like some of us have, and so you're just not going to know these things. But with experience comes a lot of this knowledge. You learn this stuff over time, and so that's why I'm sharing it with you guys. I'm trying to get this out to as many people as possible because the strike has really just kind of brought some stuff up in my mind of just how big of a scam this is, and if I was thinking that I was making all this money from DoorDash, relying on this income as my sole income. I mean, I'd be pretty ticked off if I didn't know all this. And then like three years down the line, I'm like, I'm actually not making any money. I would be pretty ticked off. Thankfully, this is not my only source of income. And I know a lot of people don't use DoorDash as their only source of income, but DoorDash tricks people into thinking you can have this as your full-time job. When in reality, it's just... It's hard to have this as your full-time job because like I said, you're making somewhere in between $6 and 60 cents to maybe $12 an hour. I mean, that's under minimum wage for some people. That's just, it's really tough to have this as a full-time job. And so I hope this brought some light on the subject and I hope it continues to get talked about because I think it's a big problem and I think it's just the biggest scam that's out there. So if you're enjoying all of this content that I'm putting out there this week, then make sure you subscribe. I got more videos coming. We got another great one tomorrow. So make sure you stay tuned. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for supporting and I'll see you in the next one.